Welcome back to Savvy Saute. If you're new here, my name is Leah, and today I have a very special video for you. Our Christmas tradition is to make gumbo with my aunt and uncle. He is from Louisiana, and he has promised to take us along in the cooking process and show us how to make his famous gumbo. So if you're ready, let's get cooking. It really helps to have all of your prep work done before you start on the pot of gumbo. So have your vegetables chopped up, your big white onion diced up really small. Have your roux ready to go. In today's case, we're going to be using a dry roux, but you could use a grease one if you needed to. Have your broth ready to go. If you're gonna have it homemade, it's gonna give extra flavor, so we highly suggest that. Have your dark meat cooked, and then if you want to use boneless, skinless chicken breast for bigger pieces of chicken in the gumbo, have that all diced up and ready to go as well. Get your tasso chopped up or your smoked meat, and then that sausage, make sure it's sliced into the size pieces that you want as well. It's just going to make everything go so much smoother when all those ingredients are needed. Dry roux is uh, basically more heart healthy as opposed to a grease one? Uh, the grease roux. Grease roux is more traditional and people, more people would know about it. Okay, so to do a dry roux, if they can't find this, like we don't have this where we're at, you would just have to make this in your oven? Absolutely, just take a cookie. And I've done it here. Oh just, yeah, just okay. Just take a cookie sheet and uh, lay it out fairly thin, or like a quarter of inch thick. Of uh, flour? Sheet, of flour. And, uh, Put your oven on about 350 and stir it about every 10 to 12 minutes. So we've got really good chicken broth that, that has the chicken, chicken with the bones and vegetables and everything. It's already done. So yes. Okay. That was done the day before to make it quicker right so now. So you uh, brought this from Mississippi. He does. Yeah. Magnolite pans. Oh yeah. I had one um, when I moved I here. remember you I did. remember. You got rid of it? Uh, I'm from a small town called Turkey Creek, Louisiana. It's about 13 miles uh, north of Mamou, Louisiana. And so we're in the heart of Louisiana, the centrally located. All right. So we're going to have about one tablespoon of oil down in the bottom of a large stock pot. And then we're going to add in two bags of seasoning blend. And we're gonna let that cook for a while to get all of the water evaporated out. We're heating back up the stock too. That's right. That's right. When we add the stock, it doesn't bring the temperature down. Mm -hmm. We don't lose any momentum, you know, because we're adding like temperature with like temperature. So this is the tasso. This is the tasso. This is about how much we use. Okay, and it's a very large pot. It's gonna feed like 15 people. That's right. So this is probably a cup, maybe less. Yeah, close to a cup. This okay. is all we have right now, so we're in a, it's like our gold it's, for the pot. It, you can smell how smoky it is. It's, it, I love it's it. It's very smoky, but you wouldn't just put that in eggs. No. It's very strong. No, I would put it in red beans and rice or the just gumbo. Just to add the flavor. Add flavor. But not as a source of meat. Not as your source, your main source. But you will get bites, of course, of this mm -hmm. in it, and you, I love it. Yeah, it's very good. I do, do I you love think, it. since I've never seen tasso in my store, it's probably something that you need to just make on your own up here. If we can't find it, or if you don't know how to make tasso, can you just use like, like an andouille sausage as like an extra flavor? I don't like andouille, so you, you I- You could use andouille, know. but it's different. So not a good different. Uh, <laughs> depends on who you're talking to. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Technically, but as far as being smoked, like an andouille sausage is smoked, this is smoked. Mm -hmm. It just depends on your personal flavor Correct. preference. Mm -hmm. Some people okay. use andouille. Now, if you can't find any of that, would it be helpful just to toss in a little bit of smoke flavor just to add that? I know it's not going to be the same. You could do that, or you could take a, uh, this This is a smoked pork front shoulder. Okay. So if you could find a pork shoulder smoked, uh, and, and pretty much highly seasoned as well. These are going to be smaller shoulders, so they're going to be more, they're going to be influenced by the smoke that better than a large one would, you see. So mm -hmm. so the smoke concentration is greater and they rub it, they baste it. Just go ahead and start adding your meat. Okay. And, and that's gonna start helping you with the oil that you need. 
And, uh, and, and if, you, if it keeps getting dry, you see how dry it's getting? Mm -hmm. And it's starting to, to brown mm -hmm. on the bottom. You can just go ahead and, and do this just to keep things from getting out of hand. You know? Okay. You can keep doing that, but you can do it a time or two. Now these sausage are going to add the oil that we need. Tiny Louisiana women I know what I'm doing because they drag it off to the side of their of their pot there. That will speak volumes to them. <laughs> so this is just to control the heat. Yeah. Basically, it's trying to accumulate on the bottom, and, and you don't want it to build up too quickly. So you just keep scraping it off the bottom like this. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to bring these vegetables down to a, a caramel-lined state. Okay. Now, you see how it's trying to brown too much? Mm -hmm. This is why I have always have a little cup of water on the side. We got it a little too hot because it's evaporating. Mm -hmm. So we want to just move it away from the heat. Now you know that it's evaporating because it was boiling so fast? Uh -huh. Okay. So we, we actually had a little too much heat. So I just pulled the pot half on, half off. I just adjust the heat by lifting the pot gotcha. or, or dragging it to the edge. Some of this. We're gonna make some more. But I don't want to just keep adding water because eventually it will work against you because you want the flavor. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to take some of this homemade broth, put it right there, okay. and we're going to stir it up good. Make sure everything's stirred in really good. Do you want this lower than high? Let's bring it to about six for now. Okay. Yeah, you can see it's like more bubbly and thick. Can okay, you see this color? Mm -hmm. See that? We want it to simmer, and we want to finish cooking the oils out of this sausage, but we don't want to cook them to pieces. Mm -hmm. We're mainly cooking our vegetables down, but we put our sausage in there so that we can get oils that will help us cook it down. Uh, we needed the caramelization. You can still see the bottom of the pot. I haven't removed it all yet. It's on low. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna give it about five minutes. Okay. And we've let the oils cook out. We've, we've lost most of the water by, you know, through steam. And what we have left is, is just natural oils and greases, the juices that have come out of the vegetables and the meat. This is what's going to carry our flavor. I'm relying mostly on this to carry our flavor through. Now, however, we have lost some of the influences uh, of the ink, so that's why I kept some of this over. Okay. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to put it through the rigorous uh, cooking that this other ingredients have been in. So uh, this is mainly for our, our taste now. Because the purpose of some of the original onion was to cook down and have that the... Yeah, we're gonna be able to taste this onion. It's not gonna be quite as blended mm -hmm. like the other. Because the longer you cook onion, the sweeter it gets mm -hmm. too. So it's a different type of For, onion flavor. Mm -hmm. It's the right color. I got enough of it floating around in there. Uh, I, what I've done, I've just merged all of these flavors, uh, the oils, and the flavors coming out of the sausage, mm -hmm. and I've merged all the flavors coming out of the vegetables. Now they're blended into this juice right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, doesn't it smell amazing? It I mean, smells so good. Okay, and so 
Uh, now it smells like a gumbo, mm -hmm. but it's just not gumbo yet. And, mm -hmm. uh, but this is a heart of the matter. It's it's what you're looking for in order to have a gumbo to turn out right. Mm -hmm. And I made a mistake. I think we need what I'm going to do is bring it back to a soft boil. I see that. Yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. I'm bringing that back to a. You see how thick that is too? That has no kind of thickener. That's nothing. That's just from all the vegetables and how it sweats out so much. And like the sugar of the vegetables sweating out. There's no thickener in that yet. And I basically melted a good portion of the of vegetables. Yeah, because a lot of those onions are newer ones, not what's been cooking all this time. Mm -hmm. Those, those bigger newer ones pieces. are for our benefit. We're going to taste them. Because the really cooked up sweater ones are going to taste different than the less cooked That's ones. That's right. Makes sense. He caramelized the other ones a lot. Instead of pouring all the stock you want, you're doing it little by little. To, it doing, gets to temperature this. faster. It, yeah, it gets to the temperature I'm looking for faster. Okay. I, I don't defeat the... Mm -hmm. See, that's how I do biscuits and gravy too. Just okay. a little bit of, you know, milk by little. It's just faster that way, but that makes sense. I was just wondering, I mean, if somebody wanted to, they could pour all of it. It's just gonna take longer you for it to pour, reach. Yeah, you just put the lid on it and let it reach temperature, you know. Okay. See, and I've heard that so many times as people will say, your roux has to get to that dark brown color. I'll say that again. This okay. this is brown and the reason for having a brown one. A lot of Louisiana people, they, they have a certain uh, look mm -hmm. that they're looking for uh, when they deciding if food's good or not. I, I'm not sure if I'm exactly right, but uh, one of the benefits from having your flour browned a lot of people from Louisiana, they like for their food to be, they want it to be pretty. Mm -hmm. And so this gives them the color. So it's mostly for a, a look. Right. The darker because it is, the this more. This isn't some kind of secret flavor or anything, you know. Uh, I'm adding the flavors and I'm going to tell the people how to do it. So. Okay. But this is. Uh, you can make that in your oven. Anybody mm -hmm. can. It just takes a while. I'm just taking some chicken broth and I will pour in there like that. It doesn't really matter how much. You just wanna take all these lumps mm -hmm. and break them up. So that was half a jar of the dry oh. roux. Yes, we'll actually use that whole jar probably. You're just starting out with this. It's, it's like you use a little and you check it. taste almost no grease. So you're tasting for grease? Yeah, if I taste a bunch of grease, we don't have it right yet. Okay. See how pretty it is? Mm -hmm. That means a lot uh, back where I'm from. That must, that's probably just old school kind of cooking, okay? <laughs> it probably don't mean nothing to anybody else, but to me, it's a way that I'm making sure that there's not direct contact with the bottom of that pot. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the heat, but I'm not getting a direct contact. So I have a peace of mind that there's no scorching going on. Mm -hmm. This is a seasoning that, that I, make, I make, but as a child, uh, the Cajun ladies kind of had bowls somewhere near their stove and it was just all kind of spices and herbs sitting there and they just catch a little with their fingers and thumb and and they never measured anything and uh, but this is something that i make and you can buy similar cajun seasons uh, off the shelf but this is kind of like what my home the flavor of my home was growing up mm. and it's just red pepper salt and pepper uh, garlic and uh, onion uh, flavors in here, so. So this would be considered a Cajun seasoning. It sure would be. And everybody has their own spin uh, on it. it. Yes, it, uh, like everybody has different fingerprints, you know, from house to house. 
um, it, it, you know, food would taste a little different as you moved through the neighborhood or, uh, because somebody might like garlic more than others and somebody might like uh, cayenne pepper more than others. And so, uh, but this is kind of how it went where I'm, where I was raised. Um, we just didn't, we just didn't know what to call it. So we just always called it heavenly spice. So. That's awesome. And, uh, it's easily easy to get the recipe too hot. So I, I do sort of, uh, I'm, I'm careful with this. And uh, I pour it on something like what I'm, the spoon is wet with the gumbo. And uh, so it's not really gonna roll off. Mm. And I'll just take a look at it like this. And uh, probably gonna need a little more. Mm. And, uh, so this right here would be would be a good consistency, or you could stretch it further by adding some more broth and more roux if you want to. Right. Uh, we, we, you can keep on adding as long as you, you got the consistency, mm -hmm. you know, the thickness, the texture. And it's not quite like water. Uh, it's got a feel, a different feel to it. Mm -hmm. It's not as thick as gravy that you might put on rice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's thinner than that, but it's not like water either. Mm -hmm. you know? It's not like chicken noodle soup. It's, no, it's thicker than soup. that. So this is dark meat. That's this is done. the thighs. Thighs. Okay. Thighs only. That's all we use. The dark meat is cooked because that's what you use to make the broth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we take the white meat and we don't want our white meat to cook into pieces and become stringy and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We want good little chunks of white mm -hmm. meat. So we're using boneless, skinless chicken breast. We're diced up and we're going to put that in here to cook. Right. So if we were to overcook this, mm -hmm. it would just become a a jailed mess of meat. Mm -hmm. So in order to avoid that, we leave it to last. Be hot enough to cook this meat, mm -hmm. but not so hot that we boil the other meat to pieces. And, uh, so you're done with the taste testing for now. We're gonna let this completely cook before you taste right. it again. Salmonella, I dare you. <laughs> And then we still have this can. This is the last ingredient we have, mm -hmm. and we're gonna add that later at the very right. end. Uh, we don't wanna seal this off because we could get a boil over quickly. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is just vent it just a little bit and let the steam escape, mm -hmm. and that will keep us uh, from having a boil over on this stove. Yeah. I'm not real sure everybody's stove, everybody have to kind of learn their stove, but for now I'm gonna just try six. Simmering for approximately 20 minutes. And uh, the chicken is pretty much done. Stir in these green chilies. We just turned the gumbo off. Uh, this is not everybody, uh, but uh, at my household coming up, uh, my mom would just turn the gumbo off and just let it set. She called it resting. And and when it cools down, in the cooling down process, uh, we believe that uh, the meat begins to suck in the flavor. And that way the meat is becoming flavored internally. Mm -hmm. and, and now we're going to let it set probably about an hour. Uh, maybe even longer before we serve it, but we will put a little heat under it before we serve it mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then eat it that way. But the meat and all, all the ingredients that have time to, or to rest or, or to merge become blended better. There are so many different styles of gumbo depending on where you're from, what your family prefers, the spices, the meats that you use, and even the color. So if you have never tried gumbo, I highly suggest you trying this recipe. And of course, let me know in the comments what you like to have. And until the next video, I will see you in the comments.